As a caster in Arena, there are three core concepts to master, damage, CC, and positioning. Most players will find it difficult to succeed at all three, which is understandable, since sometimes you can get away with only mastering one of these concepts. But when your class excels at everything, you might as well master it all. To quote Uncle Ben, With great power comes great responsibility. If you are a boomkin finding it hard to balance all three, no pun intended, then look no further. This video is all about control and how broken Cyclone can be when done correctly. Unfortunately, many low-rated boomkins aren't using it to its full potential, but luckily that can be fixed through four core concepts. Cyclone as a CC starter, as a follow-up, to peel, and to create insane pressure. We're gonna go over each concept one by one, showcasing a low-rated player failing and a high-rated player succeeding, to show you how and why you should be using your Cyclone. Sounds good? Let's get into it then. But before we do, if you're finding yourself getting owned this season, don't worry because we got you covered at skillcaps.com. We offer a money-back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating while actively using our website. Many of our users saw massive rating gains last season and you could be next. So don't delay, visit skillcaps.com slash wow today. Let's start things off by discussing Cyclone itself. You could argue that it's the best CC in the game. Don't believe me? Let's break it down. It can't be dispelled, has no cooldown, and makes target immune to healing and damage. But it has a cast time, right? Well, what if I told you that there's a PvP talent that makes Cyclone almost instant? Surely that would be unbalanced because that would mean that the spell would have no downsides. Surely Blizzard would never add that into the game, right? Not exactly. Alkan Adept causes your Alkan Frenzy to stack up to two times, as well as causing your Cyclone's cast time to be halved. This means hitting Cyclones is easier than ever, and therefore it's a must that you master how to use it. But enough talking, let's see some action. In this first example, we'll take a look at a scenario where a Druid doesn't chain Cyclones, resulting in loss of pressure. Our Boomy hits an amazing clone onto the Priest, which is made easy due to Alkan Adept. However, since we didn't chain it into another clone straight away, the following Cyclone gets faded. Starting a CC chain is the hardest part, since the CC target can use various methods of avoiding it. You have to remember that continuing a chain is easy, since the CC target can't use any methods of avoiding it because, well, they're CC'd, duh. The next game is a similar example, where the Boomkin lands a successful clone onto the enemy healer. But instead of camping next to the Druid, our Boomkin starts to move away, making it impossible to chain CC. Positioning is one key element in chaining CC, because as we already established, when you hit CC on a healer, you generally want to follow it up with more CC. Thus, moving away from the healer is not the move. Instead, you'll want to camp next to them, chaining your Cyclones together to take complete control of the game. Positioning is important when it comes to chaining Cyclones. As Waz pushes for a Cyclone onto the enemy priest, take note of the positioning. He's slowly moving towards the enemy priest, forcing them to either move, meaning they can't cast which is a CC in and of itself, or cast and get hit by the Cyclone. Once the Cyclone hits, Waz pops offensive CDs and as a response, the enemy rogue puts him in a shadowy duel. Now even though Waz is unable to reclone the priest due to the duel, he still moves towards the priest, so that once he's out of the duel, he can instantly get to spam coning again, putting pressure on the enemy priest. And while chaining the Cyclones, notice the damage he's able to put out. This is due to how Boomkin damage works. It's all instant, meaning you can easily weave star surges in between Cyclone casts. But the key point here is how much pressure is created by camping near the enemy healer as a Boomkin. The effectiveness of the camp showcased brilliantly in the following clip from Waz. Take note of how much pressure he creates when the enemy team doesn't move away from him, unlike the previous clip. He pushes for a Cyclone, and once it hits, camps by the Priest to continuously CC. The positioning is important to point out here. Waz is in range to clone not only the healer, but also the kill targets, giving a clear advantage. Forcing Turtle from the Hunter and being out of reliable CC on the Priest, Waz sees an opportunity to Cyclone the Hunter low. Made possible by the position we highlighted earlier, creating a ton of pressure. Now, if we go back to the previous low-rated example and take a look at the situation, we'll quickly notice that the Hunter is extremely low and will die if the Druid doesn't get to heal him. 
But since the Boomkin is out of clone range due to the prior mistake of not camping the enemy Druid, and knowing what you now know from the Waz example, what else do you think the Boomkin could have done with Cyclone to salvage the situation? If your answer was to Cyclone the Hunter low, giving his team more time to get CC onto the healer, then you would have been correct. Our low rated Boomkin had two options Cyclone the healer or Cyclone the Hunter low, but did neither. This is an incredibly common mistake we see low-rated Boomkins make, which is insane to think about when you realize how broken Cyclone can be. It literally prevents all healing taken, making it an indirect CC on the enemy healer, since it locks them out from healing their partner. If you think these are uncommon mistakes, think again. Here, we have a different Boomkin forcing every defensive cooldown known to man. Barkskin, Frenzied Regeneration, and Anti-Magic Zone, resulting in the enemy team being practically immortal. Ideally, we would want to use Cyclone in this situation on either the kill target while it's low or on the healer. But instead, our Boomkin casts Wrath and Star Surges, trying to damage through a huge wall of defensives unsccessfully. To showcase the importance of Cycloning low on defensive CDs, let's take a look at this game from Waz fighting Turbo. With a successful Cyclone onto the enemy healer, Waz's team forces the enemy healer's trinket and iron bark. Knowing the enemy warrior won't die through iron bark, Waz attempts to Cyclone the warrior. The enemy shaman realizes this and uses Grounding Totem to stop him. Having Grounding Totem killed and an Alkin Frenzy proc, Waz lands a successful clone onto the warrior. Notice how much pressure is being made simply by denying the enemy healer from topping the low warrior. This is why it is crucial that you don't just use Cyclone as a means of CCing the healer. For the final mistake of the video, we're gonna focus on peeling and CCing on offensive CDs. Our Boomkin gets hit by the leg sweep with their healer, which isn't ideal. The enemy team pops every offensive cooldown in their arsenal during this sweep, meaning we would ideally want to start casting Cyclone to help out our Shaman as soon as possible. However, instead our Boomkin doesn't recognize this and starts to spread dots, resulting in the poor Shaman getting hit with the gray screen. A similar concept of CCing on offensive CDs is showcased in this game, where our Boomkin is the kill target and clear indicators of an offensive go is being made. In this instance, Root Beam and Kyrian Empowerment. Instead of attempting to Cyclone the cooldowns, our Boomkin casts Starfire, not realizing he's about to die. Cyclone is such an amazing peel for two reasons. For one, it's a spammable CC, meaning it has no cooldown. For two, and the most important reason, it cannot be dispelled. There are only a few ways to get out of Cyclone. Trinket it, mass dispel it, or use major cooldowns like Ice Block or Divine Shield, which would be an insane trade for you since the enemy team would blow their major defensive CD just to not have to deal with you annoying them with Cyclones. To showcase how OP peels are, let's take a look at the following game where Waz notices his healer is in a kidney shot, which is a clear indicator of a go and therefore starts moving closer to the mage in preparation for peels. Once the mage uses Combustion, their main burst ability, Waz chains Warstomp into a Cyclone onto the mage, resulting in his Shaman not having to commit any major defensive cooldowns. Now, the mage could have ice blocked the Cyclone in this situation, but that would mean trading their biggest defensive CD, which would be an unfavorable trade. So, to recap, using Cyclone as a CC starter is incredibly easy due to the talent Alkin Adept, which makes our Cyclone nearly instant cast. The first CC is the hardest one to land, follow-up CC is therefore incredibly important to do. Whenever the enemy team has kill pressure due to offensive cooldowns like Combustion, Avenging Wrath, or Vendetta, it's important we use CC to save us and our teammates from either dying or using valuable defensive CDs. And finally, when we do our kill setups and force defensive CDs, using Cyclone to freeze the HP of our kill target on their defensives creates the most pressure possible. And if you want to learn from the pros themselves and gain the rating you've always wanted, check out skillcafts.com slash wow. There, you will find balanced druid guides where pro players break down gameplay in easy-to-follow commentaries. Our website has helped over half a million players achieve their goals, and you could be next. So don't miss out on important gear upgrades this season. Check out skillcafts.com slash wow today. And with that, we sincerely hope you feel like you have a better grip on Cyclone as an ability, and we thank you for watching till the end. Until next time!